National Weather Service provides a considerable amount of weather, water, and climate information online, from current observations and general forecast conditions to hazard-based watches and warnings. This short informational video focuses on the abundance of information provided by Weather Service forecast offices online, some of it you may not even be aware of. In the 1980s and 90s, before the Internet took hold, the National Weather Service provided observation, forecast, and warning information through text products that were relayed by the media and broadcast on NOAA Weather Radio. Then came the 21st century and the Internet. This changed everything when it came to weather information. Information could be provided not only through text products but also graphically. Useful real-time weather information such as radar imagery could be shared with the public, allowing people to track weather approaching their area. The Internet also revolutionized how forecast information could be provided, from region and county based to that based on one's precise location. Let's explore the weather information available to you through the Internet. You just might discover some useful online tools you weren't aware of. There are National Weather Service forecast offices scattered across the United States and territories like Puerto Rico. Each office offers local area forecast and warning information for that office's area of responsibility. To access online information from your local National Weather Service forecast office, you'll need to access the web page associated with that office. To find your office, click on the main web page for the National Weather Service, weather.gov you'll see a national map that illustrates watches, warnings, and advisories that are presently in effect across the country. Click on the map in the vicinity of your general location. I'll click on the Jacksonville, Florida area near where I live. I'm transferred to the National Weather Service Jacksonville, Florida webpage, as confirmed here at the top. This is the office that serves my area, which is located just south of downtown Jacksonville. From this point on in the video, I will describe what is available on this particular website. Please note, however, that not all of the features on this page will be available from all other offices. For example, as a coastal office, Weather Service Jacksonville provides marine information for the coastal waters off of Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia. Similar information obviously would not be available from an inland office like an office in the Great Plains. Likewise, other offices may provide information not shown here such as mountain forecasts, since we don't have any mountains in Florida. National Weather Service Office websites are generally organized in a similar manner to what you see here. Below the office name, you'll find news links. Here we see a climate summary link for the month of January. These types of links may be clickable, directing you to additional information. So this climate link sends us to an article about the January 2014 weather, which was much colder and wetter than normal across northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. There's text information along with some images. The news section also shows a spring storm spotter class announcement as well, and a link for which you could register for that class. Now on the day this video was made, no hazardous weather conditions were occurring in northeast Florida and southeast Georgia, just a band of showers and thunderstorms moving over the area. Had there been a significant, possibly severe weather event in progress, you might have seen a headline banner, similar to what is shown here as an example. It might be clickable that leads you to more information on the hazard. Now as I scroll down this page, you'll see there are two main sections. The main data displays are in the central part of the page and the menu located to the left. At the top of the menu, you find links to the office's Twitter and Facebook accounts, which you can access and provide comments and information. Also note in the top news section a link to the Social Media Hub. This link is also copied to the left as Social Media Dashboard. If you click on either link, you'll view the Social Media Dashboard, which shows the Twitter account tweets to the left, Facebook postings on the right and in the middle any YouTube videos for that office. Now returning to the main page, let's look deeper at the information available from this site. Note the graphical images on the main page starting with the radar animation that you see here showing a band of showers and thunderstorms moving across northeast Florida. There are actually several tabs 
of graphical information such as the forecast details for today and tonight, even a climate tab. Some of this information may not be easily viewable here. You can easily view a much larger version by just clicking on the image. And here we see a much larger example of the today forecast details. As we scroll further down, we find a band of links to a variety of information, such as watches and warnings in effect, current weather observations, forecast graphics, river and lake information, climate information, and so forth. These links are repeated on the left menu. You can click on a link to get that information, such as the observations link. I'll click there and show you an image of current weather conditions. You can move the cursor over these individual observation points to reveal the entire observation for any location. Here's the latest observation at Jacksonville International Airport, showing cloudy skies with a temperature of 74 degrees. Further down, we have a very interesting map display, but it offers more than what appears evident just from looking at the map. The display shows watches, warnings, and advisories that are in effect for the area of responsibility as well as surrounding areas. Here we see a marine dense fog advisory off the coast of South Carolina, a portion of Southeast Georgia, as well as over the Gulf of Mexico coast of Northern Florida. But this map is more useful than just showing existing watches and warnings in effect. You can click on any point on this map to get observation and forecast information for that particular location. I'll click on my location in downtown Jacksonville, for example. In doing so, you'll see observation and forecast information for that particular point. The nearest observation point is Jacksonville International Airport, showing a current temperature of 74 degrees with cloudy skies. Below that is the seven-day forecast, both in terms of icons and text uh, information. Now you'll notice that the point I clicked on was five miles southwest of Jacksonville International Airport, not downtown Jacksonville as I had desired. This is easy to fix. You'll notice to the right a map that indicates the, the point I clicked on, which was not near downtown Jacksonville. I can simply shift this map over until I find downtown Jacksonville, which is right there. Click on downtown Jacksonville, and the information on this page updates for downtown Jacksonville, Florida. Again, this shows the seven-day forecast for the location I selected. It shows general forecast information in 12-hour periods for this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and so forth. But what if I need higher resolution forecast information, perhaps even hourly trends that are expected? For this, there are a number of options available. One is to scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll find a number of links there. For hourly type forecast information, we want to focus on the links shown here. Let's look at the hourly weather graph for downtown Jacksonville. I just simply click on that link, and I come up to a useful tool for viewing hourly information. This tool displays hourly weather trend lines based on the items that I want, temperature, dew point, winds, precipitation potential, and so forth. You just check the ones you want to look at. And below that, you find the lines that reveal trends of temperature here shown in red, dew point in green, further down changes in wind. The brown line shows changes in precipitation potential. The current forecast has a 60% chance of rain today, but as this trend line shows in brown, the best chance of rain is really for the next hour or two, and then the rain chances fall off considerably down to about 20% by 6 o'clock. So the best chance of rain really is for the next hour or two, not necessarily all afternoon. This is useful information when you're trying to plan outdoor activities or outdoor events. Further down, we can look at the potential for lightning and thunder, which in this case is only a slight chance for the next hour or two, as well as the rain chances. On the rain display, you find actual rainfall amounts given in six-hour chunks. And as you can see here, we're not looking at really heavy rain on average, generally amounts of a tenth of an inch or less for each six-hour period. Now, this type of display could be confusing for some, so there are some alternatives. One is this tabular forecast link, which shows similar information, but shows it as raw numbers as opposed to lines. And so here we see hourly information of temperature, dew point, wind, rain chances, and so forth. It's just an alternative way to view the same type of information. Another option, click on this Quick Forecast tab, 
And for the location you had selected, in this case downtown Jacksonville, you can get the latest observation nearby and then further down the forecast information, including three hourly forecast information. In this case, showing the better chance of rain towards 3 o'clock and then decreasing chances as you move into the evening. As I go back to the main page, I want to point out another option that is very similar. On the upper left, there is a city and state or zip code search feature in which you can get the forecast based on that particular location. So I can enter Jacksonville, Florida, click on Go, and I'll get the same information for downtown Jacksonville, which is shown here on the map. There's one more option that you may find useful for your smartphone to access forecast information, even hourly forecast information. In the upper portion of the forecast page, you'll find a link called Mobile Weather. If you click on this link for the location you had chosen, you can get a variety of information, such as current conditions and forecast information. If you click on Detailed Forecast over here, this arrow, you'll get the 12-hour forecast for that location. If you click on the next arrow, it goes to hourly information. And here again you see the best chances of rain, 50 to 60 percent for the next hour or two, and then the chances decrease hour by hour as we move toward the evening. Even it indicates when there's a better chance for any thunderstorms, which is the first hour or two of the forecast. Pretty useful information that you can access through a smartphone. You can access this information for any point across the entire country. At the top of this display, there's a feature that shows your location. You can click on it if you want to change the location to any one across the entire country. You can base it right off a map. Zoom in on a particular area of interest. In this case, I'll choose Oklahoma City, Norman areas. And the information is updated for that particular location. Here's Oklahoma City, and we have the forecast for that location. So useful for any area of the country. As we look further down the page, we find additional observation and forecast information. And again, this can vary from one office's website to another. I want to focus now on additional information that you can access from these type of websites, which are mainly accessible from the left menu. As you can see here, the menu is divided into different sections. Here we see current hazards, forecasts, current weather, radar imagery, climate, and so forth. Under the hazards section at the top, we have an all-in-one page labeled local that you can click on to get a variety of hazard-related information. At this particular time, there were no watches and warnings in effect for any of the counties in the area of responsibility for the Jacksonville office. But you can see the type of information available on this particular page during days when we do have significant events ongoing. Another interesting feature in the hazard part of the menu is the weekly hazards tool, which you can click on to get specific information relevant to your particular needs, such as when the forecast has temperatures at or below freezing, which is shown at the top. Here we see no time during the next seven days when temperatures are forecast to be at or below freezing. As you scroll further down, there are other options that you can pick specific values of interest. For example, maybe I want to know when the temperature is forecast to drop below 60 degrees. I can pick 60 here for the low temperature. And when will the low temperature be below 60 degrees? I just click on Go. And it highlights time periods, as you see here, when we're expecting temperatures to be at or below 60 degrees. Further down, there's a precipitation tool as well. And I can change this as well. If I want to know when the forecast has a chance of rain to be 30% or greater, I can change it to 30%. And it will show, in this case, certain periods when my location has a forecast chance of rain of 30% or greater. Now this tool is similar to another one that is in the forecast section of the menu called Activity Planner. This tool gives you more options to acquire the information you need for your particular location. You can pick the information you need, maybe when the temperature will be 60 degrees or higher, when the wind speed will be 15 miles per hour or greater, and when the rain chances may be 30% or greater. And then choose your particular location. In this case, I'll choose Jacksonville. The end result highlights during the next seven days when the forecast for that location has those conditions met.
pretty useful tool for focusing on your specific needs. Another useful link on the forecast section, perhaps the most popular link, is forecast discussion. This gives a general discussion from the forecaster with respect to the upcoming forecast. It relays the key features that will affect the forecast, the level of certainty the forecaster has in the upcoming forecast, and the focus is on the actual public forecast, the aviation part, the marine portion of the forecast, as well as some preliminary information such as expected high and low temperatures and rain chance. There may also be a heads up on the watches and warnings that will be out for this particular forecast. And in this case, as you see, there are none planned for this forecast. There are a number of specific forecast links in this section of the menu relating to different areas, such as tropical weather or fire weather, aviation and marine weather as examples. Then there's the current weather section. Here we have observation data, which is similar to the observation link shown below, satellite imagery, even f information from um, rivers and lakes. I'll click on the river and lakes link, which is again the same as this link over here. This is a useful link if you live near a large lake or river in an area that where you might be prone to river flooding. This takes you to the Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Service webpage, where you can look at river locations to see what the forecast is in terms of height and the potential for flooding. The display is color-coded using the scale to the right. Green indicates where no flooding is occurring or expected. Colors in orange or red indicate flooding is occurring or expected. So on this particular day, no flooding is occurring or expected across southeast Georgia or northeast Florida. You can click on a particular site. I'll click on Jessup, Georgia, and it gives you the display of measured river stage, shown in blue, for the past few days. The most recent is the rightmost image in, in blue here at 9.6 feet. Further to the right, we see forecast values which show a steady slow decline in river stage over the next several days. You actually can get this information from all over the country. On the menu, you can click on National Rivers and you'll see the AHAPS data for the entire country. And you can click on any of these green or other colored dots. The ones we see here in orange suggest river flood conditions occurring or forecast due to a prior or existing rainfall event over the lower Mississippi Valley area. Notice the options at the top of this page. In addition to river observations and forecasts, we can look at precipitation data, and it will give a basic map of estimated rainfall over the past 24 hours. And we see actually a band of precipitation from the ongoing band of showers and thunderstorms moving over the Jacksonville metro area, and the rainfall further to the west, which occurred the prior evening. Back to the main page, another link in the current weather section is air quality. This link takes you to the airnow.gov website and provides air quality information for the location you selected, in this case for Jacksonville. But I can click on any point on this map, such as Birmingham, and it will update the information for Birmingham, Alabama. The next menu section here is radar imagery. And this is a pretty useful site for looking at precipitation areas that may be moving into your location. There's a national viewpoint, regional, as well as local radars. Let's take a look at the Jacksonville radar, and we see, as was shown on the front page of the uh, website, a band of showers and thunderstorms moving across the Jacksonville area. Let's say I live in St. Augustine and want to see how this band is moving and whether it's approaching me or moving away from the area. You can access animations shown here as loops. For reflectivity, which is what I'm showing here, precipitation, I just click on the loop and you'll see about a 30 to 45 minute animation. And for St. Augustine, you can see the rain area is actually getting closer with time, probably two hours or so away. Now this radar display is actually an overlay of multiple types of data. And you can see this at the bottom of the display that are checked here. There's a map background, a topographic map background that you can click on or off, the radar image data itself, the counties, the highways if you want to turn them on or off. If there are warnings in effect for severe thunderstorms or floods, they may appear, then you can tick them off if the data is too obscure. So you can display whatever it is you want to, to show on the, on the map very useful tool for monitoring the location and movement of areas of precipitation. You'll also note a local radar page link under radar imagery. That actually allows you to view several radars around the area at the same time or to choose any one that you want to zoom in on. So a simple page to look at multiple radars simultaneously. Moving down the menu, we come up to the climate section. And this offers a lot of useful information about past weather. A key link here is local, and that link provides a variety of information on past weather 
for the area of responsibility. You can click on a particular location that's available. I might pick Jacksonville International Airport, which is the main climate site for the Jacksonville area. I might pick a day that I'm interested in, perhaps February the 4th, and I can come up with climate information for that particular day. Here we see the climate report for Jacksonville International Airport for February 4th. The high was 67, the low 57, the rainfall we had, and so forth. And relate that to how much rain, for example, we've had since January 1st for the year. And how that compares to normal, to the right here. What record values existed, such as what the actual record highs and low temperatures were for the site on this particular day. So some useful information here for the sites available. I can get monthly information here by clicking the link on monthly climate report. For Jacksonville International Airport, I'll look at January 2014 and click Go. And this will give me a day-by-day -day listing of high and low temperatures, precipitation, winds, and so forth each day of the month, as well as an average for the entire month further down. Now the Jacksonville page has another link under climate called More. And this provides a wealth of climate information for the Jacksonville area of responsibility. You can find high and low temperatures for any of these locations by clicking on the location. Here's Lake City, Florida, showing a high of 82 and a low of 60 and no precipitation. Again, you can pick these for any of these locations. And there are a, a variety of other data available as well. Climate calendar that provides information on any particular day and month for a location like Jacksonville or Gainesville. Climate graphs daily radar rainfall amounts, and so forth, a wealth of information that might be of interest. Further down, we have record temperatures for the next few days for a couple locations within the area of responsibility. Here are the Jacksonville uh, record high and low temperatures for the next two days. So a wealth of information on climate and how current weather relates to what is normal for the time of year. Under climate, there's also a drought monitor link, and this provides information and for Jacksonville, focuses on the drought monitor for the southeastern U.S., which in this case you see not much in the way of, of drought. Further down, it shows the drought outlook for the next season. And in the, again, in this case for northern Florida, southern Georgia, not too bad. Potential for drought developing in southern Florida, according to this outlook. So information on drought conditions and drought potential are available through that link. Further down in the menu, uh, there's additional information on weather safety, on like local tides, for example, information about our office, past events, and so forth. One link in particular of interest is the one at the very bottom of the menu called Ways to Participate. This presents information on how you can provide weather information to the Weather Service, perhaps serving as a Coco Raj rainfall observer, or participating in the cooperative program, serving as a Skywarn storm spotter, providing storm reports or marine reports, and so forth. And further information can be found here to the right. So there are ways to participate if that is something of interest. Finally, at the very bottom of the menu, as well as the very bottom of the website, there's contact information for the office. Contact the office if you have any questions or suggestions about the information displayed on their web page. One final note. The look and feel of the Weather Forecast Office web page may change in the future. Here's an experimental look at what it might appear as, with national information and links at the top, followed by the actual forecast office indication and links relative to that particular forecast office. And those links and sections are similar to what they were in the original left-hand menu, with hazards, conditions, forecasts, radar imagery, uh, climate, past weather, and so forth, with more imagery and links further down. Just a peek at how the Weather Forecast Office web page may be changing in the future. The local National Weather Service website provides a wealth of past, current, and forecast weather information in different forms to serve the needs of the public in meeting the National Weather Service mission to protect life and property and to support the national economy. So explore the site and see what information you can find that can be helpful to you that you never knew existed. Thank you.